Good morning, how are we? So today I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, different golfing type of vlog today for you because I've not been able to get out and do any um, actual bits and bobs at the golf course. So somebody actually did tell me to do this and said it might be a good idea, not just for the golfing community but, but people of this um, talent pool, shall we say, uh, further afield. So I thought, do you know what? I've got nothing else to do, why not? So uh, if you follow me on Twitter, or Instagram, you'll see that I've been making um, golf socks for charity. So, so far we've raised about £450 for charity, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so I've been making golf socks for people's drivers, woods and hybrids. And they look like um, this. What I thought I'd do, I'll show you in... Um, not going to be real time because I don't think you want to sit here and watch me for four, uh, four or five hours. But I will sit and make a uh, one golf club, uh, golf cover for you today um, that I will use on my bag, and I will just show you how I make them. Now, so when I when I decided I was going to do this, I did look on Pinterest and Google for different. Um, I want to call them recipes, but they're not recipes, but different methods of how to actually do this because you obviously need something to uh, a method to follow. Now, most of the methods that I found were doing it in the round, which means you've got three small um, needles and you're basically knitting them round and round and round and round and round, so you've got no seam. Now, I can't do that. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I just cannot get the hang of it. I cannot do it. But people that can, you know, absolutely fantastic. Um, you may be able to adapt a similar sort of thing for you to do, but if not, go look on Pinterest. There's quite a few uh, methodologies on there that do use it in the round. I say I can't use it so what I did I just took that basic uh, methodology and I kind of adapted it for what I needed to do um, where I'm using I'm basically using two needles two needles well technically four but we'll come into that so um, there is a seam in it but I've, the more I'm doing the, the better the seam's looking so actually you can't see the seam on a lot of them now anyway so as I thought I'd go take you through step by step how I make them and if you want to have a go why not? Because it's something that you can actually say you've done yourself. It's something quirky to have on your golf bag, or if you know anyone that actually does golfing, it's something that they can have on their golf bag. So I'll talk you through step by step, and we'll do some speed up um, versions of through each section, and then you can actually see how the finished product looks at the end. I say we'll put some photos up, and we'll also at the end put up the methodology for uh, for the three different sizes, because obviously your hybrid is generally a small size. Your wood cover is medium size and your driver cover is a large size. So there's slightly different sizings and slightly different um, needle sizes to use for, for different ones. So I will put them up step by step at the end as well for you to actually make a note of. So you don't need to pay that much attention to what I'm saying um, as such at this point. Don't, don't sort of feel you need to pause it and write it down because I will put it all up at the end along with some more photos. So you can see from the initial photograph um, at the beginning, you need basically... It's up to you. Start with two different ball color, uh, wall colour types, uh, one for your main body and one for your stripes. But so you, you will see some photos at the end where we've actually got a little bit more funky where we've won all different colour stripes to match like um, a flag, for example. We've got ones to match football colours, so the main stripe will be made of three different colours. Um, it does get very faffy when you start doing that, I will admit it, but I'll show you how to sort of change your colours and whatnot. You'll need um, two different size knitting needles. So for the hybrid and the wood, you'll need four mil and four point five mil, and for the driver cover, you'll need five mil and five point five mil. You'll also need um, a needle. This is for doing your sewing at the end. You'll need some scissors or little mini shears that I use like this, just for cutting your wool. You'll also need a um, well, I use a pom pom maker. You can just use a bit of cardboard and wrap it around though. I'm sure if you Google different ways of making pom-poms, you can find different ways. But because I was making a lot, it was easier for me to, to invest in some of these. I think I paid something like £4 on eBay for four different size pom-poms. Um, there's a bigger one that we use for the for the driver cover pom-pom, which is like probably this sort of size. It's a lot bigger than this. So, And you also need tape measure. So you can actually track on how, many, uh, how long you're doing um, each section. So you've got the neck. And you've got the body section and obviously within the body you've got your different colour stripes the more stripes you have obviously the the, the, the smaller um, stripes of colour you're going to have 
So we'll sit, we'll get going. I'll show you how to cast on. I'll show you how I cast on. Again, there's probably a, a, a few different ways of doing this. I do it a certain way, and I'll, I'll explain why I do it this way. But um, now keep watching, and I'll you I'll, I'll basically show you the video on my hands, so you can actually see close up what I'm doing and how I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, so we'll get going, and then we'll flash through, and I'll come back and talk to you at the at the points where I need to, where we're changing from. Um, Needle to different needles to different needles and we're also changing from a uh, different colour to different colour so keep watching, get your equipment, grab a cup if you need to and let's get cracking. So start with my 4 mil needles, 4 millimetre. not quite focusing on them but they are 4 millimetre I can assure you. Um, so I, the way I cast on is I actually have, hold them both together most people will cast on using one, uh, but I actually have cast on with them with both of them together. And what that does, it gives you your cast on line a little bit more um, flexibility because once you have actually made these, we'll need to stretch the bottom a little bit to make sure it goes over the head cover. So by doing it this way, it just gives that little bit more um, degree of flexibility when you're when you're finishing when you're getting them on. So you start off and you make a loop. But you need to leave enough on one side to be able to do your cast on stitches. So um, you make a loop. You can see that. I'll do that again for you. You start off, make a loop like that around your fingers. Push one part of it through. And then pull. And then you've got, you've got a big loop there. You put both of your um, needles through. Then you just pull it tight. So that's essentially that's your first stitch on. Now I'm making a hybrid cover. So a hybrid cover, I need 32 stitches. So I need 32 cast-ons. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit faffy. Sorry about that. So to cast on, I hope you can see this. I'll do this this way around. But I'll do it this way around. See, so it makes it easier. Basically. The way I do it is I get a hold of it, put my thumb underneath and then onto there, use this one to loop round underneath and then take that loop off and then you pull it tight. So you've got two. I'll show you again. It takes a little bit of while to get, unless you actually sat there with somebody it's quite tricky to do this so you get your loop thumb under, hook it on, the other one round, I'll take that one over and off. I'm sure there probably are some other tutorials on, on YouTube that make it a little bit easier to watch, uh, but basically it's same again, loop on, pop it on, that one round, and then you pull it tight. It is a little bit faffy, if you're doing this for the very first time, it is faffy knowing that you've got to do this and you, you, your needles then do sort of tend to flail a little bit at the end because normally you would sort of tuck it under your arm and when you get good at it you just kind of like do this and you, you're flipping around and you're doing it really quick and you know, you kind of get, you get a flow. So we'll just quickly cast them. Always do your loop with your tail end like that and always do your, your your main loop round with your wool end because if you do that if you do it the other way around you end up running out of wool and you can't then do the rest of the rest of the knitting because you've run out of wool and you need to start again so it's a top tip there just make sure you're you're looping with your main wool so what
one more, number 31. Now it doesn't look very big, granted, I want to do another one more, double check, two, four, six, eight, ten. Thirty-two. So that's that's what you end up with. What I then do is I, with the tail end, I just sort of knot it up out of the way, and that's just like a reminder saying don't use this end at any point. So it just keeps it as your do not do not use end. So once you've done that, you then pull one of your needles out, and you'll see this is quite quite loose on here. So then we start doing the main neck. Of the um, of the golf cover, so this is done in rib stitch, and it's rib stitch with knit two purl two. So your knit two purl two is basically, as it says, your knit two your purl two. Now again, if you're new to knitting, you may not have done these before. So we'll sort of do a bit of a slow motion this way and the other way around as well. And the reason why. When you're doing this, it has to be in multiples of four. Because of the pattern and knit, knit two, purl two, the pattern's in blocks of four stitches. If it was knit one, purl one, it would be blocks of two stitches. So I've, I've cast on 32 stitches here. If I cast on 34 and try to do this, it would knock the pattern out. So you need to do it in, in blocks of four. So your wood... Um, pattern is 36 stitches, your driving pattern is 40 stitches. So that's just a big bit of a, of a um, you know, tip for that one. So to start off with, we're going to just do a knit. So you put your needle through, wrap it round, wrap the wool round, wrap it underneath and off. You need to make sure when you're doing this, do not pull the wool really tight because it gets if it gets really tight, it gets difficult to knit. So same again there round, under and off. To do your purl, you then pull your wool to the front of your needle and then you pass the needle through the front. Same again, round, back and off. Same again, under, round, back and off. Hope you can still see this. Sorry, I'm it's really awkward with the camera. Um, I'm, I'm, I will keep on doing it so, you, so you, if you do miss anything that you know you can see. But you will notice where you'll get a few like loose stitches, but don't worry, they will tighten up later on as you go through. So again, to go back to your knitting pattern, you pull the wool back through to the back and you pull your needle back to the front. So again, through, round, under, off, through, round, under, off, and then back to your purl, through, round, under, off, through, round, under, off. Right, so we've got seven inches of our rib stitch. You can see here why it's called a rib because as soon as you sort of pull it apart, it stretches. You've got the little ribs in it, look. So that just helps to uh, stretch the neck of the, of the golf club cover to actually get over over the head and, and it, then it sort of sets back into shape to protect the, uh, the shaft of the club. So once you've got here, don't forget you are on the four mil needles and you need to now increase to the 4.5 mil needles. So Move your surplus 4mm out of the way so you don't use it and bring your two 4.5mm needles in to play. So what we also need to do is we need to increase the stitches by 5 along the row. And that just helps the, the head cover be slightly bigger so it's actually able to, to, to comfortably go around the, the driver or the hybrid head cover comfortably without being too tight. So. Obviously, I will show you how to do that, but we are now changing from a rib stitch to a stocking stitch as well. So, this is what I've showed before, where it's the, it's the straight in, round, through and back and out, that sort of thing. But, so there will be some closer up um, shots of how to do the stitching as well. 
So we'll get going. As I said, we do need to increase the, the stitches by five along the row. Now, it doesn't matter where you do these, as long as they're not all close together. So what I tend to do is I'll, I'll knit five stitches then, and then increase one, knit five and increase one. So they're roughly spaced out. They don't, it doesn't have to be an exact science. So, so start off with your knit stitch again. I have got my four and a half mil needle. So it's in, round with the wool, through to the front and over, or off. In, round, through, off. In, round, through, off. In, round, through, off. In, round, through, off. So that's my five, and now I'm now going to increase a stitch. So you start off the same as a normal knit. So you put your needle through, you put your needle round, you bring it this way as if, but instead of taking it off the needle, you then pull it round to the back and you knit another stitch in the back of that loop. It's quite tricky to see. It might be easier to, if you look up another knitting tutorial and how to um, increase a knit stitch on a, on a row. That will probably show you a lot closer up. But I'll do it again in a minute for you. So that's now increased that stitch there. So I'll knit another five. One, two, three. Five. So again, we go in through the front, round with the with the with the wool, through to the front, and then just you sort of pull it to slacken it a little bit, and then tip the needle around to the back, and then you do the same sort of stitch in, round, through, and then take it off. It takes a little bit of practice and a bit of getting used to increasing a stitch, but it is quite easy when you've actually when you've done it a few times. Uh, so do persevere with that, because you do need to add your your five stitches on. So I'll just add this on the fifth stitch. Um, it is easier to add a, increase a stitch on a knit row rather than a purl row. So yeah, if you do um, do a YouTube search on increase stitch on an, on knit. And it will, uh, it will give you some. some that's, that's basically how I learn how to do the increase in a stitch from YouTube tutorials. So they they are really good, and a lot of them are only about like a minute or so long. So well worth well worth a look at. Um, so that's the last increase stitch. That's five stitches I have increased across that row now. So there's now 37 stitches instead of the 32 that we cast on with. So that's your first knit row done, remember? Cast aside your um, number four needle and pick up your four and a half. And remember this time we are on a stocking stitch, we are doing a purl row. So it's a stocking stitches, knit a row, purl a row. Um, so again, we start off, like I've mentioned before, with a knit stitch on the ends, just to keep that neat, tidy edge. And then you bring the wool round to the front in through the front, round with your wool, out through the back and off. In through the front, round, back and off. You do that all the way along. So that's our three knit rows done, well stiff stocking stitch rows, knit, knit one purl, one knit one. Now I wouldn't normally recommend you change the wool. Now I wouldn't normally recommend you change the wool on a purl row unless you're kind of used to knitting and sort of used to what you're doing. 
but um, because of the the set out between the stripes and what I'm doing, and I'm sort of quite confident in in changing the colours on a knit row, I'm going to do it. But normally I would say do it if you're a newbie on a knit row. It's a lot easier. So we've cut that that down. We've got the tail, and we've got our new colour wool here. With the uh, the tail must always go to the back because if you put the tail to the front, you're going to end up trying to knit with your, with the tail, and you're going to run out of wool. So put the tail to the back. So it's normal, like I said before, you do a knit stitch on the start of, of a purl row. So you put the knit the, the needle through. That's a tail to the back, and you just sort of hook that round there so the wool's at the front, and do your knit stitch. Then you pull the wool, the wool end, round to the front. And you carry on knitting the row in the pearl. Now it will be a little bit loose at the end, but we will we will go back and tie that up in a minute when we get to the end of this row. Again, you get to the end, take it back round to the front and do a knit stitch. Okay, so that's your colour change. Before you go any further, you need to go back to the end and just tie this off. So the way I do that, so normally I would lay it on the, on the table so it's a bit flatter, but you take the, the original colour, give that a bit of a pull, not too tight, and you do the same with your new colour. Give that a little bit of a, of a, of a tug just to tighten it up and then I always do a uh, reef knot so it's left over right right over left so if I can put that there and if you can see that uh, but so this is my left the original colour left over the right and give it a, a tie and then the same right over left and give it a tie and just pull it tight at that point it's not going to tie the wool any tighter on the actual stitching so there you've got your tied off colour change. Now don't I don't at this point cut these off. I always keep them in there until I've actually stitched it together and then I cut it off. First time I did these I did, I did try and cut them off quite short to start with and then when I was stitching it together I was getting bits poking through. So keep these on. Once you've actually stitched the, uh, the head cover together then you go back inside and cut them off. So I'll continue now. And I'll do another three rows in the pink and I'll do exactly the same as what I've just done and change the colour back to the purple. And I'll do three rows in purple and I'll continue to do four rows in pink, three purple, four in pink, until I get four of the, of the pink stitches done, uh, pink rows done. And then once I've finished, I will come back to you and then we'll see how to tie the thing off and get it to stitch together. So we're nearly there. Just to note as well, this first bit here, that the, the neck of the, of the, of the head cover, took me around about two hours-ish to do solid. Um, so it's not a slow process. It'll probably take you, say, around about four hours at least uh, to make to make one of the smaller ones. Uh, maybe it's five to start with. The better you get at them, the more, the more you do them, the quicker you will get. So, But they're just nice little little keepsakes to have, a little something to do for, like I say, I'm doing them for charity, uh, but just something to kind of keep me busy, really. So uh, keep watching, and we'll see how we get on when we finish doing all the stripes. So, you can see now we've got one, two, three, four pink stripes, and then we've, they're all at four rows. These are at three rows. The bottom is three rows. I have done an extra two rows on here, so that's also five. Um, as well as it generally measuring 32 rows long, it also needs to be around about five inches. So if it means you're having an extra two rows at the top, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. So as long as it's around about the five inches long and then the bottom seven, so overall about 12 inches um, for your head cover, that's fine. So your final bit to start the casting off procedure is to knit two together all the way along there. And it is as easy as it sounds, you're just knitting two stitches together. Um, so instead of just putting your needle through one, you're actually putting it through two together. And it's easier to do this on the knit side. So as, as you would do one knit stitch, you're actually, I don't know if you can see it, I'm not doing too, sorry, too far up there. You're actually, instead of just putting it through one, you're actually putting it through, through two together. Two stitches round, through and out. 
and you do that all the way along but because we've got an odd number of stitches your last stitch will just be one and all this is doing is it's helping to sort of taper the top of the club head cover um, to make it easy to sort of like scrunch it together I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I mean what I mean when we come to sew it together And there we go, so you can see it's kind of brought it in a little bit. So your last part is to make sure that you've got enough of this, this thread. You probably want to be cutting it so it's about about there. Maybe it's a bit longer. It doesn't matter if you cut this too long. It's just to make sure that you've got enough to actually sew it together. So we'll make sure we've got plenty. And again, just use your little snips to cut it off. Easy as that. So the last part, taking your your wool, taking your needle. You need you, instead of having a, a a normal sewing needle, you need like a, a thicker needle for this. It's got a bigger eye uh, because there's no way that you will thread wool through the normal eye of a of a, a sewing needle. So pull it all the way down. And we're simply going to cast off. And all we do with here is you thread in all these these loops, these stitches, onto the needle. It's as easy as that. And once you've threaded them all on, you thread them onto the actual thread. Once you've done that. Make sure that all the all the odds and ends that you've you've tied together. Make sure they're all inside, and you basically you can see this. Just pulling that tight at the top, so it nips it together, and then you've got your basic shape there for your head cover. See. So now it's the case of sewing it together. Now there is a special way to do this, and I believe it's called. I think it's the quilting stitch. Or something to that effect. But basically, just give that a bit of a tug at the top, but not don't pull it too tight because you don't want to snap the wall. But just give it enough of a tug to make sure it's tight at the top. And then I just um, sew in back into the top, just to kind of like secure that, so it doesn't, you know, unravel itself. Now, it's, this is where it does get a little bit tricky, and this is where, again, I'm not sh quite sure how easy you're going to be able to see this, or you may need to have a look at another um, another YouTube video on how to stitch, do a quilt stitch. I believe it's called a quilt stitch. So what, what you basically do at the side, I just want to see if you can see this, there's like, um, you've got the actual pattern there, and then right on the very edge, there's like, um, if you put the needle through, you can see like little little bits like that all the way down. It's like little bridges almost all the way down. Can you see those? And you'll have them on both sides. Again, it's right on the very edge. You can see like your, your seam edge, and then literally just inside, you've got like your little bridges. There. and that's what you're sewing into basically you need to make sure because you've got your, your different colour stitches uh, different colour stripes you're roughly lining those up so that when you're stitching together you're lining up kind of straight so if I start off um, and I go let's do this into the side like that and then into this side Like that, you can just see what I've just sort of got into there. You don't have to pull it tight at this point, you just sort of pull it loose, and you'll see why it's this sort of stitch in a minute. So you just kind of carry on going down the sides, loosely sewing as you go. It does get a bit fiddly, I must admit. 
these so sort of just tuck it into them and you're making sure as you're going that you're keeping those tails all these tucked inside inside the head cover because you don't want those to be on the outside when you when you're sewing it down because otherwise it causes a bit of a nightmare so you can see it's still quite loose as I'm going down and then what happens is when you get so far in a minute you shall see the magic happen you can see that one there is trying to come out so I just tuck it back in and nearly there nearly there do one more on each side so I get to the pink if I stop roughly where the pink is I know on either side I know roughly I'm in the right space for, for carrying on so once you've done that all you do is, if you can see that, you see it's quite loose. As soon as I pull that, you want you not do it now. You pull it, and it just tightens it up. You don't really see that do it well, but it does actually tighten, tighten that up. It hasn't done it. If it doesn't do it, feel free to cry. I think it's done it because I've, I've double stitched into one. If you do happen to double stitch into the same one, just take your take your needle out and uh, yeah, it's the, you can see, see where the problem is, and you can just unstitch it back to that point. It is a game of trial and error in some respects, and it's purely because I've just sort of knitted into the same same area twice and that can sometimes lock your um, knitting so if I pull that now yep I've pulled it, I've pulled it nice and tight as it should do now so this just shows you that things don't always go right and I probably could edit it out but I think you need to see when things go wrong how to rectify them because you might get a YouTube video telling you how to do something but it doesn't tell you how to fix it so basically that's what you do just if you're stitching something up and it goes wrong, just unpick it, take the needle off, unpick it and then redo it. So let's go back into it. There. Along there. Back into that. And then finally into that one. So again, I'm still stopping at the pink. So I know where I'm, I'm restarting at. And you can see it's still loose there. Oh, no, you can't. You can see it's still loose there. If I just pull that, it tightens it up. So it's got a nice, neat seam down there, you see. So what I'll do, I'll just carry on down, and I'll keep showing you every now and again um, what it looks like as I'm going down. See that? Pull that. It magically pulls it nice and neat. You see? Happy days. So, generally, generally speaking, the seam's quite seamless, so to speak. You just carry on doing that all the way down, even when you get into here. I'll, I'll show you when we get into here. Um, but it's the same principle. It might even be called ladder stitch, so if you can't find quilt stitch, Google ladder, ladder stitch. But uh, as I say, this is, I'm just showing you how I make these and the stitches I use. They might not be conventionally correct, but they work and they work for me and they get the job done. So I will carry on down here and get this thing finished. So carrying on down now with the uh, with the rib stitch area. This one, it's, the pattern's kind of there for you. So on on the top side of it, or on the on on on, oh, let's get this straight, uh, on this side, you want to be knitting down the middle of that V there. Same again. You just go in between and you're finding the ladder. This side, it's 
just on the edge there. And again, you find in the, the ladder, just inside there like that. So um, I'll just need a couple just to show you what we're, what we're looking for and what sort of effect you're going to end up with. You don't have to knit every single one as well when you do this, but you can sort of knit, knit a couple together and see how that goes. Um, so I'm knitting it quite big so you can kind of see the effect that we're getting. I do tend to do two, two stitches at a time here. So you can see there we've got the, uh, the ladder effect there. And again, you just do the same as before, pull it tight, and there you've got the seam. So this one, by the time it's stitched together, this one you can't see the seam. So I'll carry on down and show you the finished product. So this is all sewn up. You can see where the seam is on the um, head, but you can't really see where the seam is along there. So it's quite a good seam for, uh, for doing it on a rib, uh, that quilting stitch. Uh, so all I do now, I'll give it a bit of a tug, as you mentioned at the start, you'll notice, remember I did it with the two cast on with the two um, two needles, just give it a bit of a tug and that just makes sure it's it's nice and free to go over a, a hybrid head cover. Next thing, just turn it inside out and then just so far and then what I do is just to kind of make sure it's, it's secure and it's not going to all come loose is I'll just sort of double stitch into the end with my thread that I've just used to to um, to do the seam, to do it a couple of times, hoping that it doesn't come off the needle, which it just has. But that's fine. It's it's nice and tight now, nice and secure. And then all I'll do with this last little bit, instead of cutting it off immediately, I will thread it up through the stitches that I've just done. All these stitches here, I'll just thread it up. And then once it's in there, then I'll tie it off, I'll cut it off at the top. And then remember when we did the tail at the start as well, we tied it off, I do exactly the same with that. All I'll do is put this on a needle and thread this up through the back of the, uh, back of the head cover as well. That just keeps it nice and neat, keeps it chucked out of the way. And then once it's up there, take the needle off, trim both these off. And there we have our completed hybrid head cover. Well, I say completed, all that's missing now the pom-pom. Let's get cracking. Right, pom-poms are fairly easy, fairly straightforward to make. You want your two balls of wool that you've made to make your um, head cover. Plenty of it. And essentially these pom-pom makers, they're in two halves like that. So you'll be, you wrap the wool around all this half until it's full. And then you pop it in there and then you do the same this side, wrap it round, pop it in there and then you'll see there's like a, a seam down there, basically you cut through there, wrap some thread round, tie it tight, pop it off this and there's your pom pom. So keep watching and see what the, how the magic happens. You can uh, use yourself, if you haven't got one of these, you can just take some cardboard, uh, two pieces of cardboard together, whatever size pom pom you want, do that about the size of your cardboard, cut a hole in the middle and then just wrap loads of thread round it. But again, if you look on YouTube, there's probably lots of tutorials on how to make your own pom-poms without these. So, um, yeah, let's get cracking. I'm making this pom-pom and get this, fin this head cover finished. And I can put it on my, my uh, hybrid and see what it looks like, shall we?
need a piece of thread to put on your pom-pom. Next step, you need to cut this bad boy open. So, I mentioned before, you've got that little bit of a, uh, a cut through there. This is where these scissors come in really handy. For this, a conventional pair of scissors will be a bit of a pain to get through, so these little shears are brilliant for doing these. So, they do take a bit of a cutting. Bear in mind, you are cutting through quite a few layers of, of wool. So do it little bit by little bit. You keep on nibbling away. You'll occasionally miss a piece as well. Just keep on nibbling through. This is the same even if you do it yourself on a bit of cardboard. It's it's tough to just cut through. That's one side. The same again on the other side. And there we go, so you're all the way through. And you get your thread and you put it through the middle, right round to about there. So it's in the middle there, and you do it again the same as you did before with your uh, reef knot left over right, right over left. So you do it once and you pull it really, really, really tight as, as much as you can without snapping. And then you do the same again there, right over left. And that should give you your pom pom. So your last bit is to release it from the from the um, contraption. This is where you'd need to be a little bit careful if you're making it yourself with a bit of cardboard that you don't cut um, all the wool through the cardboard. So get that over there, give it a shake. And there you have your pom pom. This again is where these shears come in quite handy because you see it's a little bit funny shaped. So all you do is you just sort of trim it to shape where you need to. It's a little bit rounded. Once you've done that, it's ready to be stitched on. So your last piece of your jigsaw, once you've made your pom pom and you're happy with it, just bear in mind with your pom-poms that you're not mass producing them in a factory so they're never going to be absolutely perfect. You could get a bit snip happy forever trying to get it, put it absolutely bang on but do you know what? I mean like I've just seen a little bit of the sides on but but it's it's quirky. It's it's your, your own creation. Um, so to, to get it on, turn your cover inside once, turn it inside again just to kind of get the top so it's in, uh, and I just put my hand inside it to kind of give it a bit of stability ready for I'm sewing it in. So I basically do a sew, a stitch through, through one side, stitch through the other side. I kind of make a triangle with a stitch basically, making sure I don't go into the same stitch again. Because remember what I said before, if you go into the same stitch again it will lock the stitching up. So you do like a triangle in and out with the stitches and then I very carefully, if you can see, very carefully thread it through the middle of the pom-pom that comes out the other side and as it's going through just make sure that you're pulling all your little pom-pom bits out of the way so you can't really see it and then the same when it comes through sort of wiggle it through so it's you've got the thread at the bottom of the pom pom and then thread it through the middle or as close as the middle as you can of the of the head cover and inside the head cover. At this point give it again a bit of a tug but not too hard so you don't snap it and then pull the head cover right inside out so you can see the inside of where the pom pom is. That's the middle of the, of the head cover. And give it a bit of a tug and then just do a few stitches 
just to make sure that doesn't come loose. And so yeah, each time you do it, just give it a bit of a bit of a tug. I have done these before where I've pulled it too tight and I have uh, snapped the wool. So just be careful if you if you're using wool that's not particularly strong, just be very very careful. Um, so that'll do. And my last one, I then just I kind of pull that round. Just kind of gives it a bit of a lock. And then do a couple of knots. With the stitches. And hold it there and just knot it once. Knot it twice. Pull it off. Trim it. Again, just so it's got a bit of a bit of a tuft on it, just so it doesn't, uh, you know, un unravel itself. Unfold your head cover, and there, guys and gals, you have got one very very funky golf head cover. So there you go. What do you think to that? Fairly easy, fairly straightforward. Something that will probably take you there about four hours to do. Bit of a hobby, something you can raise money for charity for if you want to do them like I am in my recovery, or just just you know sell to your mates. When I've been doing the donations, most people have been donating around about ten pound. I haven't put a specific price on them when I've said to donate. Just said for a donation, I will make you one of these for free. So um, on my YouTube homepage, in my about, I've got an email address. Should you wish to actually make a donation and have me make you one. Rather than make your own, please feel free to give me a contact, uh, drop me a line and let me know. So, moments of truth. Here's my four hybrid. Here's my four hybrid cover. Does it fit? Let's have a go, shall we? Easy. Easy as that look. There we go. One hybrid head cover. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you don't subscribe to me already, if you are a uh, a golfer and you do like golfy bits of content please feel free, feel free to subscribe uh, my name's Cory and I'm the golfing princess so uh, drop me a line drop me a subscribe um, don't forget to hit that like button if you did like what you saw and let's share the love of these golfing hybrids because you don't see many of these fluffy woolly ones anymore and I think they look great and they're just something a little bit quirky on your bag um, little Christmas presents trinkets something like that so don't forget to hit subscribe hit that like Come along, see what other things are on my channel. The golfing content will start again from um, a week on Saturday or a week on Sunday, but certainly next weekend we are out filming again. So the golfing content will start back up, don't worry guys, because uh, we're back out on the course. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Take care and we'll see you soon.